So, hello, welcome back to another episode of the Self Development with Tactics podcast. Today, um, we probably are going to go through a few articles on productivity, on getting things done, on being a bit more efficient, maybe even with time. And um, maybe, just really maybe, we're going to start with Tiago Fortes. Oh no, it's, it's actually not been Tiago Fortes, but maybe he's actually also having... Let me see, um, Tiago Forte, maybe he's having Forte Labs, experts on productivity, maybe there's also a blog, Praxis blog, free posts, let's actually see what we have in there. Uh, why not question how to build your personal productivity stack, book update publishing deals in China and Taiwan, case study how the second brain meme is going mainstream, building, do you actually see anything? No, you don't. Which is not that good. But there you go. Fortalize the yoga of eating food as a source of information. How to build your personal productivity stack. How to stop using email as a task manager and everything in box. <laughs> um, maybe. Maybe, just maybe. Just really maybe on the net aliasing site because yesterday we finished up with um, Design Your Work by Tiago Forte. Um, maybe there's also something on productivity there. Yeah, there is. So let's actually see. The Effective Executive by Peter Drucker. The best book on getting your most important work done. Read this instead of every other quote unquote productivity book. Getting results. The Agile Way. This was one of the first productivity books that really changed how I thought about life and work. I would highly recommend it for anyone looking for a more robust productivity system. So we're going to do so. Because I think I don't know it, to be honest. And it is rated 8 out of 10, by the way, for all the podcast listeners. High level thoughts. This was one of the first productivity books oh, I've read that. Is it actually a long one? No. Summary notes. An agile life is one that can easily respond to change, where you're not overly constrained by rigid planning, but can rather adapt and get things done in a way that fits your goals and the constant randomness of life. Don't set static rigid goals. Keep testing and adjusting as you go. Always have a bias for action. Um, As funny as it is, I was a bit philosophical today about taking action, about just getting things done, about doing things, about quote unquote just doing something, you know, and, and, and maybe not thinking that much, you know, sometimes just working, just doing, just whatever. A problem that I've seen with it quite always is um, when I'm starting to do something for the sake of starting to do something. Um, is it really sensical? Should I really do so? Because, um, well, if I'm starting into the wrong direction, it is no good. If I'm starting in the right direction, or into the right direction with the wrong plan and or the wrong thing in mind, it is also not good. You know, so planning beforehand really does make sense. It shouldn't just take overhand, I'd say, and it shouldn't just be quote unquote too much. I would assume, I would say, I would argue, but anyway. Don't focus on just burning down your backlog. Focus on how much value you can create. Sometimes the backlog is the best left unfinished. It's best left unfinished. Don't keep trying to fix your weaknesses. Play to your strengths instead. Yes. Time management is less important because the thing is, if you... If you're working on your weaknesses, you know, you're trying to get better at something you're not good at yet, are you ever going to be that good? Probably not really, because those people that are in the top 10% that are really fucking good, they have done it for so long and for so much time. And um, you are probably never going to be on that level. If you haven't been good at it, or if you're not good at it yet, 
and um, you're not having all the practice these people have. Of course, there are some amazing stories of people that have never been in a certain field, then learned this field and excelled. And it is amazing. I do not want to say that um, it is impossible, that one should not try it and whatnot, but one should be aware that it might be a complete waste of time to do so. On the other hand, if you're already really good at something and playing on your strengths and working on your strengths, what might be happening is that you're in the one or in the top 1% or 0.1%. Maybe you're going to be just such amazing in this field. Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. You don't know. Nobody knows. Um, but it is something to keep in mind. It is something to consider. It is something to um, have in front of your eyes. Time management is less important than energy management. Spend your best energy on your most important work and everything else will follow. The key isn't to have some huge long-term plan, but to rather know the next vital, the vital few things you need to do to hit the goal you want to accomplish. Yes, um, but it is difficult to know those vital things. You know, you have to figure out those vital things. What is the most important of the thing that I'm working on right now? Um, what is it for me? Because I don't really know. What is the most important thing about the podcast? What is the most important thing about what I'm doing right now? I don't know. Is it the quality? Is it what I'm talking about? It probably is what I'm talking about. Quality isn't, you know, as long as you can understand me, as long as you can hear me, it's not that of an issue. But yeah, anyway. Um... Don't base your day on... Don't base your day on what you didn't get done in the past. Base it on what you want to accomplish now, what will have the biggest impact now. Set a weekly reflection of what went well, what didn't, what you got done, what you want to do in the future. Taking action is the best cure for analysis paralysis. Yes. Know what you care about most, your hotspots in personal life and work life. Prioritize those over everything else. See how your time fits into those hot spots. If you don't set maximums and minimums on how you apply time to different areas, someone will for you. But a maximum on career, a minimum on personal. What? Put a maximum on career, minimum on personal. I wouldn't say so. I really wouldn't. Because it is about fucking time. I also do want to spend some time for... Things that are not career intended. Hmm. When setting your weekly goals, ask yourself, if this were Friday, what would, it, what would I be happiest about having accomplished? What would I be most annoyed at myself for not having finished? This is actually a very good thought, thought experiment, I'd say. Um, what is happening? Um, because... Well, I don't know, like, I do hate the feeling of, okay, I haven't done what I wanted to do today. But I really enjoy those feelings of, okay, I have done those things that I wanted to do today. You know, I've accomplished what I've sought out to do. This is amazing. It really is. Rule of three. Focus on three goals for the day, week, month, year. Make them feed up from one, or, uh, from one to the next and work them down when setting new ones. So the day goals fit the work goals etc just as necessary. Carve out a chunk of your life force for making improvements and leading the life you want to live. The more you get in the habit of making time for what is most important, the more you'll get great results. Which just makes sense, doesn't it? But with that being said, I'm probably going to end the episode here. I wish you the best. 